Hello and welcome to another Talking Tool episode. I'm your host Teddy and today I'm being joined once again by... Hayden! And today we're going to be talking about the Team and T 2003 Season 1 Episode 14, The Notes on the Underground Part 2. So quickly before we do get into the episode, there was a comment which I received and you're going to love this Hayden for quite a few different reasons. So right. Aisha Edmondson, I'm pretty sure I said that wrong so sorry, they put, Hayden is so funny, uh, lost, he di- uh, lost his dislike uh, f- uh, for Krang, a uh, really great podcast. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you ever so much. You're finally famous. Yay. <laughs> oh, well, thank you ever so much to whomever that was. Thank you. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, actually keeping on track with the podcast, um, what do you think about this episode briefly? Well, this episode briefly, I, you know me by now, Teddy, I can't put this into words briefly, like, all I can say, this is just a crazy episode, and really, this, like, really, really annoying for the cliffhangers, but this episode was great overall. You had to say that this episode was, I don't think it was good as last week's episode, but I do, but there's like a lot of really great things in this episode. I like how they're still continuing on doing the adventure stuff, which I do love. And just like with last week's episode with like a lot of stuff to do my childhood, it, oh god, it, there's so many great things in this episode. Um, okay, so we first start this episode off, um, with the Tales fighting the monsters. Uh, what do you think about this scene? Um, that scene was well. We, as as of last episode, the monsters they surrounded the turtles. They're about to fight, and of course, it goes into a cliffhanger. Now we're back into it, and we're just straight into the action. Like we're straight into the violence. The turtles are going at it. The monsters are going at it. Like there is just violence all around. And of course, I've just got to quickly say, I have got to say this mikey and his references to scooby-doo i was not expecting that whatsoever yeah i mean i was quite surprised at that as well um just, i mean i must admit with this whole fight scene uh, i mean i must say i did like the scooby-doo thing i I really love the soundtrack for this fight scene it i don't think i've heard that one before but it's worked so well <laughs> I, I i don't know how to put that into words but yeah um also what the monsters I found the the power scaling a bit off. Uh, did you notice that, or did you think it was like normal for how they were fighting with the turtles? Um, it was a bit bit weird in my stance. Like, I know they have their own different unique abilities and all that, but like, it was a bit weird. Like, one guy can climb walls. Well, I guess they can all climb and scale walls, as we later on in the episode we know about, but. I'm not, I'm not too sure. I do understand where you're coming from, but I just, I don't know how to, like, say it. Like, one can spit. Like, I know they've got different stuff, but yeah, I do understand where you're coming from there, mate. Yeah, just because it felt weird that basically, but they can, like, like uh, and basically they can hold on and wait, climb on walls, they can throw heavy objects and stuff like that, but they can easily get kicked uh, by a turtle, and in some cases, just get hit by, uh, by doing stuff. I just found that a bit weird. Like, I know that it's child, like kids show and all that, but I still, f- I do feel as though there should have still been some sort of power balance. But yeah, it was like how Mikey just was fixating on like the words that were just from him, like saying that he was odd and stuff like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> like it was the worst possible time to for Mikey to have like a personal argument like mikey your brothers are getting their shell kicked you gotta go help them or else it's gonna be you that's gonna be flown <laughs> across the room yeah i found that a bit weird um also speaking of mike i do like how they did keep his like scared attitude for this one because i know they like some i, I don't know it feels though that sometimes when you do multiple episodes you can quickly lose certain aspects of the characters but i do definitely like how they like they still kept that part of him um yeah I mean, uh, one thing which I did really enjoy, um, and it's like a really great comparison from like 2012 and 2003, was when earlier told Raph uh, to retreat, um, and I know, that, and this is like a really great comparison uh, for the two versions, just because if you look at 2012 when we've seen that, um, a great example is, um, 
in episode New Girl in Town when I was trying to find or trying to catch uh, Snakeweed. And Lily said to go on the rooftops, Raph said just uh, run around. And they argue about that. But in here, I liked how Raph, um, like, he, like, he respected Lily's decision and did it in, uh, like, 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 well, did it in a way that he can accept it. And it's like the, like, the two comparisons between the two people or two shows where it shows, like, two brothers where, like, in this version, they do respect each other, um, like, greatly and do respect their wishes and all that. It was 112, they, where Raph wants to prove that he's better. So I thought that was, like, a really interesting thing to see here. Um, and yeah, also, I must admit that this whole first fight scene, that went extremely fast. I don't know if you noticed that as well. Yeah, it, mm, it kind of did for me, but, like, the fight scene took... I, In my opinion, I thought the fight scene was quite long. Like, it was very long, long-winded. Like, sure, they could have shortened it down, but, yeah, I thought it was quite a, a long time because they kind of realised, it's like, hold on a minute, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, and then they should, or I'm, I'm not too sure, but I thought it was quite long-winded. No, oh, well... I just found like it was just like it just like went at like a really fast pace. Um, yeah. Um, but afterwards we do get um the turtles and the monsters finally come together and talking, and we do um also get their names and all that. Um, what do you think about their names? Because I must admit, I do think they have really cool names. I'm not gonna lie. They when they said their names, I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. So we had um. What was it? Stonebiter or uh, Stonebiter was the brown one. Razorfist yeah. was the red one, and Quarry was the blue one. Quarry. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie; it could have been a bit better, Quarry, but Stonebiter and Redfist was that was pretty good. Yeah, I was also want to say this. I do think that Quarry's design is. I must admit, all designs are pretty cool. But I must admit, the only weird thing on Quarry's design. Is the fact that his biceps are different, but um, I I I don't know. Like, it's a, I know it's like a really small little detail, but for me, it just seemed like very weird to have. I I don't know. It just stands out quite a bit, and I'm not really one for blood and guts and all that. But it's supposed to. I, I I don't know. Like, have you understand where I'm coming from <laughs> with that? Yeah, I understand. Like, you could see part of his skeleton that's sticking out. Like, his vertebrae is on the outside and in. And I'm not going to lie, it kind of did remind me of, like, Ben 10 characters. Yeah. <laughs> like, the old Ben 10 series, like, they would morph into different characters, and they would look... I just... Really? It just reminded me of Ben 10 so much. Just the different characters, like, what was it? I'm trying to remember the different characters. Um, it was Forearms. Waldemar. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, also, and one thing which I which must admit, after like twenty plus years, I finally laughed at the joke where uh, Corey said for Mikey was odd one. Um, for some reason, this is actually the first time I laughed at this joke, and I don't really know why it's taken me so long to laugh at it. Um, I'm not too sure. I mean, I can understand when I was younger because maybe I wasn't really understanding what was being said and all that. But even when I've watched this episode recently, I'm quite surprised I didn't love that before. So, I, I don't know. I do think that going into this episode, especially with this scene, like a really great example, is the fact that I've had like a new look on this episode. And now it's not... Because before I would say that... Like, this whole story arc does like go downwards after episode one, or or part one. And I must admit, like, going into this episode, I did have like low expectations just because of what I remembered from it. And knowing what I do know than watching it, it w- I must admit, I did really enjoy this one a lot more than what I was initially expecting. And I do think that this is like a great example where I knew what I was expecting, but then because of the way that we're doing stuff now with the podcast and all that, it's all just like, huh, okay, that's like a new interesting way of looking at things. And it's just like, and l- like this scene was like a really good one where it's just like, Okay, yeah, now that I'm actually really, like, really getting into things and all that, I'm <laughs> enjoying it. Um, okay, uh, so then with the, uh, next bit, we do have the other self monsters coming in to go after them, and they're getting the force filled up. Uh, what do you think about that scene? I thought that was a pretty cool scene, in my opinion. Like, the turtles, they realise 
their monsters are not the enemy, but their friends. Um, I really did enjoy how um, Quarry, like, he knew how to operate the system. Like, sure, he was down there for a pretty long time, but he had the intellect and knowledge left behind from the foot to operate the shield to protect his friends and himself for that long t- for that period of time, which I I gotta say was pretty impressive. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh, what do, what do monsters? Um. What do you think about uh, those the, all the other monsters? Like the spider one, the giant one, uh, the, oh. the f- f- flying one. <laughs> what do you think about yes. those? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, they were really cool. And um, one of them, I can't remember. It was it was like the stone one, but he had one eye. Oh, Do you yeah. know, he had one eye. He reminded me um, from. He reminded me like a transformer. From, oh, he reminded me of a transformer from Transformers. Uh, Decepticon from Transformers, like um, um. I can't remember. It was a Decepticon. He had one eye. And, um, he, um, he just reminded me of so much. I can't, it's not Starscream. Um, it's not, um, oh, give me a, give me a moment and I will try and find it because it will <laughs> annoy me for the rest of the evening if I don't figure out, um, if I don't figure out the, the guy's name. Well, I must admit, like, with the monsters, as a kid, for some reason, they scared me. I don't know why, and I think it's just the entrance, but uh, like, the, like the way those introducing it. But yeah, they, they scared me. Uh, but with this scene, I did have like a like quite a few questions with this overall. Um, okay, so one like Raph uh, was trying to help by pulling the door and while well, helping out Stone Bart and Razor Fist. I don't know why he was even doing it. His strength was pretty pointless, really, compared to Razor Fist and um, Stone Biter. So I found his help was a bit pointless, really. Um, and then also with the um, uh, also with, uh, there's two other things for let's like, say which is interesting. So one like Corey saying, which I found really interesting, was the fact that they did play. Um, well, I must admit this this episode, I'll say, which showed that like they knew their audience and they weren't trying to dumb things down. Just like when they was talking about uh, the other monsters saying they're uh, de- de- deteriorated uh, brains and all that, and I thought, dude, that was like quite a mature thing to really talk about. So I really did enjoy that and, and showing that they know their audience have not dumbing it down just because it's a kids show. And I do like they are taking more a more of a mature approach to everything, which I found was really great. But then, the thing that really got me was the force field. So, in the last episode, uh, we got to see the force field was uh, basically taking the tools out of the cave and stuff like that. Um, but in this episode, they were trying to get this force field up, and they did, but yet it did not uh, push the monsters of the turtles out. It, it only pushed the other monsters out. So, how? Yeah. That's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> I I did have the exact same question. Like I was wondering how and why the force field didn't push everyone out, despite the fact that last episode the turtles got pushed against the wall and almost got crushed. Like unless uh, Quarry entered in a specific code or a specific program to prevent anyone outside the circle when the force field was activated to not be crushed or affected perhaps i'm not too sure yeah i, I don't think we'll ever get an answer to that either no, um, and it will drive us insane <laughs> yep <laughs> um but yeah after that the toes uh decide and um, they want to help the monsters out by getting a new crystal so go down to the underground uh what do you think about all the under underground settings the under underground settings well um I I wasn't I'm not gonna lie they are pretty cool and I just gotta say I love how we don't use the same scenes over and over again like back in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles season 2012 um they used a lot of the same scenes of New York the sewers they just used a whole 
bunch of scenes over and over again, but in this series, completely different. Each scene is unique and different in its own right. Like previous episodes, we went to an abandoned metro station, we went to an abandoned cave, and now an abandoned genetics lab, and now we're into the under underground, and each one is unique and different to each other, and it's just really cool to see that they take the time and effort to create these amazing and diverse environments that we the audience can we that we can experience and it's just so cool to see how they've taken each and every time to get the stones to get the creatures the monsters the whole ruins the perspectives just right to show how vast and different these surroundings are which i just think is just awesome you have to say that with your points about the control stuff, I do think for like that's more of a budget thing for the show, but I do think that's like a, I don't know, I think that's one of those things like uh, more comparison between 2D and 3D and all that stuff. But I do think that in like 2D, you can definitely tell that you definitely are able to have a lot more freedom with what you're able to do, especially with like some of these uh, scenes. Like even though they're only used for maybe a couple of seconds, they do look really amazing. And it is like, I know that they seem like really, like really interesting places and really fascinating things. But I definitely would love to see a lot more of them, like explore. Because even when we do get to like the final post bit, where we do get to see some ruins that look like the toll there, that like looks amazing. Just and just like really, um, like what I've been saying with like past episodes is that it really expands this universe. It expands the history of this universe, and there's just so much they could do with it. And I do think that's just really great because there's so much they can do and shame I don't really go in it too much but with all the do set up here it's just so amazing compared to 2012 which I know that they do have a different focus on the show so it's understandable that they wouldn't want to do stuff like this but at the same time I do think that with all the do here it just sets things up and it just sets the whole universe up to be just so uniquely different and just feels as though that it's more lively in so many different ways. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, so after that, we do get the turtles going into the whirlpool. Um, do, you, do you have anything to say about that? Just because I, I don't know why, and I cannot explain this, but I just love the turtles going into the whirlpool and Mikey just, like, floating down. Love that. I can't explain why, but I just love it so much. Um, to be honest, I didn't really have much to say about this scene. Like, the turtles, they just go, they follow the monsters blindly down a wormhole, wormhole, sorry, and <laughs> they have no idea where it's going to end up. So, I was a bit like, why would you do that? But I'm guessing, like, okay, sure, it's for the story. But yeah, it was pretty funny seeing Mikey float down on his shell through the water, almost getting impaled by the the diamonds or spikes whatever you call them but yeah i don't really have much to say about that um well after that we do get um the turtles being chased by the monsters and then uh donny opens up the door um and then that's when he gets uh, teleported away or something like that what do you think about that scene um to be honest i really like going back to my point earlier about the in the diverse and unique scenes that they created i gotta say like each scene even though it's only for a few seconds they are so uniquely different to one another and they have their own personality with each and every single scene like for instance when the turtles are walking up the stairs into the catacombs we saw the markings of like of an ancient civilization which is similar to the ones they have back at the lair it was just so cool to see, like, all this coming together, like, as the audience, you piece and you piece by piece together what's happening in this universe. Like, an ancient civilization was here before any other person was before. And, of course, the turtles are experiencing this for the first time, and so are we as the audience, because we're piecing together what is actually going down in the underground. So, it's just really interesting to see, and, of course... I gotta say, the monsters, they're pretty cool, but yeah, uh, when Donnie got teleported, and when Donnie opened the door and got teleported, I was, um, I was thinking, okay, this is cool, there's teleportation now, and I'm not gonna lie, 
I was very disappointed that they left it on another cliffhanger. <laughs> I, I cannot deal with these cliffhangers. Every episode that I've come across thus far has had cliffhanger half the cliffhanger and I can't take it anymore. I want to know what happens and you're leaving me at the worst possible moment <laughs> to do that. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I must admit, like, with this scene, I did like how, even though it was only for a short bit with the little, um, the little pod, like, little, like, I, I don't really know what it's called, like, podiums, or, like, it was, it was, it's just little rocks with the markings from the toes there. I must admit, I do love that, just because, even though it was very minor thing, and even, but it's a really cool detail just to really expand the universe, and it just really makes me wonder, just, like, I, I don't know, because with, um, Anything with what happens with the markings and stuff like that. It really just makes me wonder just what really happened with everything down here. Because even, cause I, I don't know, um, because if, cause even when you do find out with what happens in the next episode, it's just one of those things that it just makes you wonder a lot of things about uh, so much more. But I do love how it, they do have the markings really does it serve the universe and all that. And then the monsters, they look cool, amazing as well. Um, I don't, I don't really read so much to really say about them in this bit here, just because it's more the setup bit. Um, but when they're trying to, uh, but when the monsters are trying to bash into the door, um, it does seem like a bit weird. Um, for like, so you got Razor Fist, who, uh, who, who hits it first, and then that's when, um, Stonebuyer hits it. And if Razor Fist didn't work, well, then why would, um, uh, stone bars would work, and then Quarry tries to scratch it. So uh, I sounds that their little uh, <laughs> reasoning behind their stuff was maybe a bit too stupid in a way. But well, I guess it somewhat works. Um, yeah. but then ooh, yeah, you saying something? Oh no, I was I was just saying yeah, you have got a point there. And then of course Quarry spits on it, and that doesn't work either. So. <laughs> No, I can understand the acid word because that's a bit different to hitting or slicing it. Um, but yeah, with the Dunn stuff, that was really interesting. I can't really, I can't really say too much about it because I know what happens next and all that. So, I don't, so, like, for now, I don't really have too much, really too much to really say about it, but I thought it was really cool. And from what I can tell, you don't really like this cliffhanger or do you like it? Um, I, I'm 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 not saying I'm I like the cliffhanger I really do. It's just annoying for me that I don't know what happens next. That's the most annoying part about it. <laughs> like I like the cliffhanger. It's good. It's it's what captivates the audience to watch it on and on and on. And that's where I'm at. And that's where I'm at at the moment. It's like you really like we have the story. It's there. There's more action. But every single time that there's action going on or there's something interesting going on they leave you at the worst possible time and so you have to wait another week or another time to watch the episode and it just oh like don't get me wrong <laughs> i love the episode it's great 100 percent. it's captivating it's interesting it's action-packed but when you leave it at the worst possible cliffhanger possible and you're already captivated you already want to know what's going on next you can't, and it just, that's what annoys me the most about this episode. You want to know what's going to happen, but you can't because you have to wait till next time. And it just, yeah, it's one of those episodes. Wow, I did not realise you were, like, really involved in, like, like, like you're so interested in this version of Turtles. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, but... a lot has changed. <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah, um, so, okay, so, yeah, uh, we're going, uh, so going off that, um, what do you think is going to happen in next week's episode? Next week's episode, I have not the slightest clue. I literally, when teleportation came into the fold, I'm like, okay, this is like some Star Trek stuff going on right here. Like, I have no idea what's going on. Like, we got teleportation, we got ancient structures, we got power crystals, we got genetic mutation. Literally, everything that I thought thus far has been completely wrong. So I am just going to absolutely wing it and see what happens next time. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, so going for some of the concern made about the story arcs and that goes downhill, um, like, where do you stand on that? Like, do you think that this episode wasn't as good as, as episode one, or part one, or do you think it's about the same, all that? Because, I'm... I, just because I don't think this one, this episode, even though this episode is a good episode, 
I don't think it was as good as part one, but it's like a still really good and enjoyable episode. It's a really good one, I believe. Like, don't get me wrong, I enjoy the episode really much so. Like, this episode is a good filler episode, if you understand where I'm coming from. Like, it fills a part. Like, it doesn't tell the whole story, but it fills a part, if you get what I mean. Yeah. I just think that, like, there are, like, certain aspects about this one that, like, that, that do carry on that I do love about the adventure stuff. But I just think that there's just something missing about this episode that, that I had it in the last episode. And I can't explain what, because last week's episode just had so many great things going for it. But this one, I don't know, it just missed something and can't tell what. But I do think that, um, in saying that, I do think that this episode... Was a lot better than like quite a few of the previous episodes before the notes from the underground uh, story arc, and I think that's because I don't know if it's here because it's connected to a much larger story that like about and, and it's just continuing from the last one and setting up for another one, or if this one was just like a really gr- or just like pacing, I can't exactly tell where it was, but I think this episode is a much better one than some of the early episodes from the season. But it wasn't as good as the uh, last episode. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, do you want to hear yeah. some trivia now? Yes. Shockwave! Was sorry. that the Transformer? <laughs> That's the Transformer. I'm sorry. I It literally just popped into my head. It's like, Shockwave. That's the one I'm talking about. Shockwave. It took me that long to realise what I'm talking about. It's Shockwave. Shockwave, he's got the one eye in the Transformer series, and he doesn't talk or anything like that. And that's what it reminded me of, one of the characters in mm. the, in this episode. The others, and of course, the, the stone guy. He looks like a stone guy, but he's got a one eye. That's who I'm thinking of, Shockwave. And for all, those, for all of you that know what I'm talking about, from the Transformer series, Shockwave, you understand where I'm coming from. So, yeah. I was just quite surprised you just shouted out Shockwave. Just like, huh, what? <laughs> Sorry, I just had to get it out. I was so thinking, it's like, it's Shockwave. It's, and then, of course, I didn't realise it until I said it. It's like, oh, God, I said that out loud. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, we're going on trivia now. Uh, and this is very limited to what we have. So this is the fifth time Mikey says Cowabunga, um... Marky says, uh, Zoinks, which was referenced to Scooby Doo. Uh, this is the first episode in the series where the new layer is not shown. Must mean so it isn't in the episode either. Though it says, uh, uh, um, yeah, so. There wasn't really too much, uh, too much for the trivia, so I'm somewhat bit disappointed by that. Um, okay, so. For the cast, there's even, I think there's only less people than last week's episode. So we've got Sam Regal who's doing Donny, uh, Michael Sinclair doing Leonardo, Wayne Grayson doing uh, Michelangelo, Extra doing Quarry, uh, Raphael um, doing Raphael. Uh, wait, I didn't say right. Frank Frankson doing Raphael, Rosen Fist and Stone Bart don't have any um, oh uh, voice actors. Uh, well, I definitely don't have them uh, in the series. The uh, the other monsters. Uh, do me t- uh, tell you what they are because they're not. They don't really have any name sort of thing. So uh, we've got King Nail. Who was he? Um, he was the. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So King Nail was the was the red one that had the big tail and the uh and the claws that looked like razor fist but wasn't. Um, we had the underground spider monster. We had the underground Cyclops monster and the underground Insectoid monster. So I'm pretty sure we already know what the Spider monster is. Um, that one eye monster was the Cyclops monster. And the Insectoid one was the blue one that looked like Quarry. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, who do we look in uh, this week for the cast? Because I'm pretty sure we've done all the uh, actors, um, really. Yeah, I'm looking at the cast right now. Um, it is very, very small. There yeah. is only about five cast members for this episode. So we've got yeah. Michael's, uh, Michael, um, Sin- 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 Michael, Nicholas. who plays this, St. Yeah. Nicholas, thank you, who plays this in Leonardo. We've got Sam Rigo as Donatello, Eric, Sh- um, Wayne Grayson, Michelangelo, and Gregory Abbey as Raphael. Um, the only person that I can see on here is Eric Stewart, who plays as Quarry. And I don't know if we've done Eric Stewart yet. 
Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, we did him in the first episode. He was the purple dragon leader. You know, the one that got killed in the first episode. Oh yeah. And he I also did the voice of Brock in Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, um. I'm not too yeah. sure. Then we kind of we kind of gone over everyone thus far, unless we've yeah. got another character that we haven't done yet. Um, who's no, not, not in this yet. episode. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Also, I'm just looking at the time for the podcast. It feels like that we're missing stuff. I know that we can't do um, the comments because I mean, it, I mean, for viewers at home, uh, time of recording the new Team and T Music Mayhem trailer came out, so I decided not to because I feel as though not many people were going to comment on that. But in so I still feel as though that we, I, I don't know, have we missed anything from the episode? Because. Um... I'm not too sure. We got all the quotes down from Mikey. We got the fighting scenes. We got the force field scene. We've got the underground scenes. Um, we got the bunker. Well, no, the bunker was previous, but um, it just feels like I've done all this bit too quick. But at the same time, we talked about we got, it in depth. All yeah. that. <laughs> oh, how about? I know this is just one small scene, but yeah, when Quarry it. when Quarry ate the bug that came out of the like lake underground lake like that's something it's showing that there is more than meets the eye like there's creatures way weirder than the turtles themselves living in the underground yeah i must admit with that scene i must admit i did really enjoy it just because you know again it's even though it's only small and all that is I, I don't know it's one of those things where like, even when I, was, when I was looking at the um the whirlpool thing which is looking at it and just like this is honestly something I would like to explore a lot more, or just have a whole TV show about, just for turtles exploring stuff. And I think, but whenever the turtles ex- like explore a new place, I think that's probably when turtles are at their best. And just seeing them here is just amazing, and just like even this small little animal is really sets off like a like chain of reactions of thoughts of like, oh well, if this monster's here, then this one could appear, and this 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 and this and all that. And I really do wish that. Like, going forward, uh, they would have done a lot more exploring episodes, especially for the underground, as you can clearly tell that there's a lot more to it other than just these uh, few monsters and some uh, little ruins and stuff like that. So, it's one of those ones which, I've re- which I really do want to explore a lot more, and the whole monster situation with that little monster guy is definitely one which I'll, I don't know, I'd love to see a lot more to different monsters. I, I hope you understand where I come from. <laughs> Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, because there could be, like, a huge world, uh, an ecosystem that we have never seen before, and it would be really cool to see the monsters of the under underground come out and just see what there is. Like, we got that little creature that got eaten by Quarry. We have no idea what that was, because Quarry ate the thing, but, yeah, just seeing what else is down there. There could be, like, a giant uh, hydra... Um, a worm that is about the size of New York, st- by the size of New York. Who knows? There could be a variety of creatures that we don't know da- what's going on in the underground. Like we have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. And also, one thing which I do want to add on to this, um, just just so we could pass some time. Um, was my was, was and as we feel that basically the mon- that those monsters were the one who's like do went up to the surface to look see where the crystal was. So two things I don't want to bring on to that. Uh, one, how do they move so quickly around the sewers without really knowing where to go, and how to hide from the turtles? And two, why didn't they go to the lair? That's all I really got to say about that. Uh, do anything to say about that? To be honest, I didn't really think of that. Well, <laughs> now you have. Um, okay, so for the next episode, um, it's called Notes from the Underground Part 3. Uh, you've already said that you, that you don't really know what, what to really make of it, so I guess that's gonna be a good thing. Um, but who do you think is gonna be starting the episode off? Oh, jeez, this question. Um, <laughs> so we had Mikey, then we had Donnie. I. I think it may be Donnie again. Oh god, you're wrong. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, next week's one is gonna be started off by Raphael. So... God, that was my first <laughs> one, and then I changed it to Donnie. Ah. Oh. 
you, you tried. I, I, I should have went with my gut. <laughs> what's, what's the most like, with this um with this episode with the uh, intro bit? I've I found it really weird that that done the um it's in the last episode, Monkey um he he just starts the whole thing off normally, uh just uh, but he doesn't mention his name. In next week's episode, Raph doesn't mention his name whatsoever, but in this episode, 14 episodes into it, he go, uh, Donnie starts the episode off by saying, my name is Donatello. I, I, I don't know. I think I, we already know by, yeah. ne- by now, as the audience, like, who they are and why they're there. <laughs> I think we already established that a long time ago. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I mean, the first sentence is, my name is Donatello, and it's total science. They're going to start th- this whole thing off with saying, and, um, uh, and it could start this episode off as, um, was Don Taylor saying, as a total science. That would have been a bit better start. I, I know that this is my uh, nitpick, but, but, I mean, we, we gotta talk about something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, so next week we'll be going back to normal in terms of getting review, uh, reviews and opinions for the episode. Um, and you can do so by sending them in through, the um to oh, the oh was it um the YouTube community tab uh was Reddit post Facebook post and the anchor app if you send it through either a text message or voice message and we read them out and uh, yeah so I've been your host Teddy and I've been Hayden and we'll see you all soon goodbye yo bye bye. <laughs>